In this segment, we're going to talk about multi-class classification. So, so far, we've talked about binary classification, where roughly we kind of looked at uh, pictures that look like this, where we have a bunch of points in space that are labeled as either positive or negative. And now we're going to think about uh, having, you know, basically points that might come from multiple classes. And so this is going to be a generalization of binary classification. It's going to be useful for a lot of problems in NLP um, where there are more than just two classes. So we're going to define uh, the set of classes as this thing, script Y here. Um, we're also going to talk about this sometimes as the output space, um, particularly when we get to structured models. So there are ways of doing this with binary classification. Um, so for example, you can have uh, a technique called one versus all, where basically you draw a kind of boundary that separates each class from uh, you know, all of the other ones. And so this comes about from having n binary classifiers. Um, but there are, there are times when this doesn't work. Um, you should be able to convince yourself that uh, if we've got uh, something that looks like this, um, it's going to be very difficult in, well, you would need more than linear classification to uh, handle the fact that the kind of threes can't be separated from the ones and twos so easily. Um, and so we want to kind of avoid hacks like this and instead just do things the right way. So instead, we're going to think about reformulating the classification techniques we've seen so far uh, using uh, one of two methods for generalizing them to this multi-class case. So uh, these two techniques are going to be as follows. We're either going to have one weight vector per class, and we're going to call this the different weights, or DW approach, or we have different features. We're going to call that df uh, per class. So what we're going to see is that these are two more or less equivalent ways of formulating things in the multi-class case. But different weights is going to look like what we do when we do a lot of neural net stuff. And different features is going to be very useful for thinking about structured classification. So I do want to set up both of these, even though uh, for the algorithms that we're about to see and the kind of basic setting, they're completely equivalent. So uh, under different weights, different weights, you know, in some ways you could kind of think of it as a little bit like one versus all, um, though it's not it's not trained as a bunch of binary classifiers, but the idea is is kind of similar. Uh, we say that the classification decision is the argmax over y in this set y. So previously, we thought about a decision boundary. Where is it positive? Where is it negative? Now we think about, uh, OK, which value in y lets the following expression take, it, take its maximum value? Um, and the expression is this. So, uh, what we have here now is this w is now indexed by y. And so what we have is we have a fixed set of features, and then we say, OK, I'm going to hit this with a whole bunch of different weight vectors. And whichever weight vector uh, has the highest dot product with it, that's my prediction. All right. The different features version of this looks like the following. single weight vector, now not indexed by y, 
Um, but now the features that we extract do depend on y. Um, and so the thing I want to emphasize is that this y in here is what we think of as a hypothesized y. So it's not the case that we're like cheating and looking at the gold classification decision. Instead, what we're doing here is we're scrolling through all of the possible labels that we can have and saying, okay, which one of these actually, uh, or you know, instantiate features with each one of these possible labels and then give me the score when I take the dot product here. So the reason we're not gonna use this as much in neural nets is that uh, basically the way we're gonna think about neural networks is, is like kind of taking the input X and doing a whole bunch of computation on it. And then at an output layer, we, we kind of determine what class something falls into. Um, the different features technique is not so good for that because by injecting the Y kind of early into the process, you, you would end up having to rerun your neural net N times for doing N way classification, which is not something you want to do. Okay, so we're going to look at an example uh, of topic classification using these two different frameworks. So we're going to have uh, a sentence X too many drug trials, too few patients. Um, and Y in this case is going to be uh, health, sports, or science. Okay. Um, f of x is going to be bag of words, uh, let's say bag of unigrams. Um, and we are only going to look at the following unigrams. Drug, patients, and baseball. Okay, so, uh, you should be able to convince yourself that uh, f of x for this example is 1, 1, 0. We have drug and patients there, but not baseball. All right, so that's sort of sufficient to think about the different weights version of this. So in the different weights versions, version of this, we think about, um, for example, the weight vector, we have a w health weight vector, which Maybe I'm, I'm just going to make up some values here. Um, maybe drug and patients both have high weights on, under this weight vector, um, but baseball has a low weight because typically health articles won't talk about baseball. And so, you know, this gives us a score of 7.6. Um, and just to, you know, throw out one for uh, weights for sports. Um, you know, maybe drug shows up there sometimes, uh, patients not so much, and then baseball obviously is highly, you know, it's going to have a high weight here, and uh, this gives minus 1.9. Okay, so, uh, you know, we're not going to show uh, for science, but basically you compute these three dot products and, oh, health is going to be the highest, so that's going to be the classification decision that we pick. So the only difference from before is that we have one weight vector per class, and uh, you know, rather than comparing it against zero, we're now saying which of these weight vectors gives us the highest score. Okay. Now, thinking about the different features perspective, different features is a little bit uh, is a little bit weirder. Um, so. Recall that we're going to define this feature vector f of x comma y. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to define this as uh, f of x replicated for each class. 
And you'll see in a second why this I said that this is equivalent to what we had before. Um, let's see. Um, so, What we have here is the f of x comma y equals health is going to have this 1, 1, 0 vector in this first position here. Um, and then it's going to have a whole bunch of zeros after that. When we have f of x with y equals sports, instead what we're going to have is zeros and then ones in the second, the, the, the feature vector now kind of occupies the second position here, and then a bunch more zeros. So the way to think about this is that previously our features were just an indicator of does the sentence x contain this word? So now it's an indicator of Sent contains, you know, uh, word i and y equals, um, you know, in this case, sports. That's the that's the kind of meaning of the features here. And so the reasoning behind this is that. Uh, you know, we're defining this conjunctive feature that looks at both x and y. And now what we can do is we can define a single weight vector w um, where it is a linearization of the weights from before. So now all the weights can live in a single weight vector, and as you kind of toggle between which y you're hypothesizing, you end up with different, uh, you know, you end up with different values of this dot product because the features now kind of change in this block structure. So the reason I the the reason I kind of belaboring this point about how these things behave as indicators is that when we get into structured classification, what we're going to see is that we're going to think about um, you know whys that are more complicated. They're like set part of speech tags at each point in a sentence or something like that. And so there, it's not going to be practical to think about having one set of weights per. Um, you know, per different class that we're classifying, because our, our classes are going to be these large structured objects like sequences of part of, parts of speech. And so we're going to have to think about um, these more complicated feature structures that conjoin properties of the input, like what words does a sentence contain, with properties of the output, like what label are we using here. Um, for now, though, you could think about either of these things as equivalent. Either um, you know you have this kind of copy-paste feature vector structure and one weight vector, or you have just a single feature vector and then uh, you know different weight vectors for each one. That's the end of the segment.